means there is an error. I did have a student one time say, why, you know, could I go back and comment one of my examples? And I had what I thought was a great teacher answer. If you want comments in there, it would be a great exercise for you to go through and put the comments in. Because that would show that you truly understand it. And I think that's a good answer. I really do. All right? Plus, I'm lazy. And, and a lot of times, <laughs> I don't put the comments in. All right. So now, this is a code to process the error. So what do we want to do? Obviously, we want to put some sort of message in there. So I'll say label text equals cannot delete this faculty member likely reasons has student or class assigned. descriptive as you think is appropriate. Alright? Notice that I said likely reason. Likely reason. Why didn't I absolutely say um, you know, it is because there are definitively. Server could be down. Yeah. Who knows what else could be going wrong? Who knows what else could be going wrong? Alright? Um, there are all the errors that you anticipate, and then there's a whole slew of errors that you can't anticipate or that you, you know, you know in the back of your head that they could happen, but, you know, you, you don't expect or whatever, all right? And therefore, um, later on we could possibly do something to, to be a little more uh, uh, clear and catch the error, but for now, we're just going to fudge it and say, here's a likely problem. Try again later. Now, there's one more thing that we have to do. We have to tell the framework that we got this one. So, all right, I got this one. Framework, you don't need to do anything. So, that will be, do, that will be handled by there is a attribute in the E object. What's the E object again? The E object uh, is the object that has all the information about the event that just happened. By saying <coughs> e.exceptionHandled equals true, we're telling the framework, hey, we've, we've dealt with this exception. So it knows not to do something else with it. All right? Um, so let's try this again. Now if we go in and we try to delete someone, we get our neat little error message up here as opposed to the ugly error message, which in real life would be even uglier than what we saw because security would, would keep the server from displaying the real error message. So we have this, we can, it explains it, and we don't get the ugly error message. Why does everybody hate message boxes? Why does everyone hate message boxes? It seems, it seems to be the trend to go to um, on page as opposed to pop-up box. Well, no, well, well, let's think this through, all right? Because there's, you know, too bad the French students aren't here because I'm sure they'd have found this discussion fascinating if they found the first part so interesting because I could go on for days about why people hate message boxes. But, first of all, who's giving this error? The client or the server? server. Server's giving this error, right? This is a, it was, the error got generated in my server-side code. How can my server pop up a message box on someone else's machine? Uh, I could fudge it. I could write a little bit of JavaScript that does that, you know? That would get ugly, all right? And why don't 
don't you like message box? Why don't I like message boxes? Uh, I think the usability of them is, is bad. All right. Um, number one, you know, I hate when um, you get, you know, you correct one error, then you get a second error. You correct, you know, that's just, there, there's other ways to fix that. But let's say, for example, if it said, um, if it said, you know, um, for, for validating a page, you know, if it said you're missing the phone number, credit card number, and uh, date of birth. And I close a message box. And I look and I say, well, wait a minute. It said I was missing what? The phone number and the date of birth and what was the other field that I said? Exactly. You don't remember. <laughs> if it was up on the screen, you would have remembered that because you could see it. So I think the okay. usability of, of text boxes isn't very good. Um, it is, yeah, I was going to say, it, 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 strictly speaking, it's a modal window, and a modal window means exactly, you have to close it to do anything else. So I'm stuck on that browser window with the, with the message box appearing. I can't even say, forget it, I'm going to ESPN and see what's on tonight, right? You have to close that window first, and at that point, you know, so, yeah, I, I don't think they're, I, from a usability perspective, I don't think they're as good. Um, <coughs> With JavaScript and CSS, you know, uh, the, the web development community has gotten a lot more sophisticated in those things. So there's a lot of ways that we can present errors better than, than that, in, in my mind, that doesn't interfere. And then again, the additional concern of this coming from the server, it would be clunky to try to throw up a, a message box on the client. Good question, though. All right, let's spend a couple minutes looking at the code because I have seen, we generated the, or we, we put in our own code for the delete statement. So we made sure we got it right, right? I have seen cases, though, when you generate the insert, update, and delete where Visual Studio gets it wrong. All right. So you need to be able to look at the code and understand how it works. So let's go and look at the code. And I don't mean the code behind. I mean the actual code that is part of the page. So let's look at the source. All right. There's our grid view. Notice what we have now. We have, as part of our SQL data source, we have a delete command along with a select command. If you look at the, the examples we've done previous to this, you would just see the select command. All right? But now we have a delete command, and it equals the command that I put in before, which says delete from faculty where FID equals question mark, which is just what I put in before. Meaning that this delete accepts one parameter. All right? And that parameter, the value of it is the FID. It gets it directly from the row that it's in. Well, well let's, let's look and see exactly where it gets it from. Interesting. I thought it did it another way. I, I think I'm getting confused between this and inserts and updates. How did it get it? It got it from the fact that the key of this is the FID. It knows that you want to um, delete based on the primary key, and therefore 
it knows that that is a primary key and therefore it uses as a parameter. I think. Either that or it matched it up based on the name in the delete statement, the FID. But yeah, you're right, it gets it from the current row. All right. So that's a delete. All right. Let's sort of summarize a delete. Um, it can, um, <coughs> it typically it's going to have a where clause. Typically the where clause is going to be the primary key of whatever table you're deleting from because most of the time you want to delete just one thing. All right. The delete can either succeed or fail. Um, besides all the garden variety reasons of bad syntax, bad parameters, etc., one thing that you can't possibly code or test for is, well, I won't say you can't possibly, because a lot of things are possible. One thing that you might not code or, or, or test for is uh, foreign key issues, where it can't delete because of uh, a foreign key constraint, in which case the delete will fail. and by testing in the deleted event, we can uh, handle those sorts of errors in, in the case of a deletion. Um, question. If I try to delete, if I have a delete statement that says this, delete from faculty where FID equals 5555, and there is no faculty member 5555, do I get an error? Actually not. You don't get an error if you try to delete something and there's nothing there. There's one thing that can be confusing for people, all right, is they will write something and they will, let's say if you coded something wrong, all right, let's go in just for laughs and I'll say where location ID equals that. I deleted it, I didn't get an error, and yet the person's still there. Why is it? Well, because your delete statement wasn't correct, and it tried to delete it, and again, this, this shows me that it must use that key field uh, to supply the parameter. Um, it didn't delete anything, but yet that's not an error. I mean, it, you know, to, 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 to personify these, these statements, the delete statement thinks it did its job. You wanted 555 five, five gone? Okay, 555 is gone. I deleted everything with 555. Five, five. There's nothing there, but I deleted them. All right? And therefore, it really doesn't generate an error. All right? Um, so you do have to be careful about that. All right? Sometimes if you delete something and you don't get an error, but yet it's not gone, it's probably because your delete statement is not deleting what you expect it to. And it's actually deleting nothing and not getting an error. All right. <coughs> Let me go and unlock lab, and then I'll come back, upload this example, and uh, get the videos. Uh, next time we will probably, yeah, next time we will talk about the update and maybe the insert. Uh, the update and insert will work a lot like this, just so, um, a little bit of foreshadowing there. So we should be able to move through the update and uh, insert fairly quickly. All right, we'll see you over in the lab.